I'd say, listen, I'd grab it and, 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 and do it while they sleep. Just go right on in and say, just, Lord, just, just touch them. You know, when these kids have nightmares, all you need to do is go right in, lay hands on them, pray for them. All these evil spirits, these, these evil thoughts, these nightmares, they go now in Jesus' name. The spirit of peace comes upon my child. And you watch the Holy Spirit come upon you. Lay your hands on your kids. Grandma and Grandpa, lay your hands on your grandkids. Well, they'll think I'm crazy. They think you're crazy anyway. Go ahead and be the crazy grandma for Jesus. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Some grandma better be amen to me out here. Don't let me stand. Right. Just do it. You know what? Because they'll shed tears at your funeral. They'll say, I remember when Grandma laid her hands on me. I remember when Grandpa used to pray for me. He grabbed me. He wouldn't let me go. God bless this kid. Why not do it? Well, the, the disciples did. The disciples did. Matter of fact, it's biblical before, before the, the preachers went out. The elders of the church, you know what they do? They, they get around these people and they pray for them. They get everybody to get a prayer up and then they send them out. Paul and Silas, before they went on their missionary journeys, they had hands laid on them. Holy Spirit, go with them. And then they went out, and man, they saved souls, they healed bodies, they cast out devils, they raised the dead. Why? Because they had hands laid on them. The Holy Spirit came upon them. Number five, number five. The fifth and final way that the Holy Spirit can come upon us today is by, by the Holy Spirit is received by hearing about Him. I hear you about it. Look at this with me from, uh, from, from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, so Peter's preaching uh, about uh, the Holy Spirit uh, to, to a group of believers one day in, uh, in, in Cornelius' house. Cornelius. While Peter's talking to them, just like I'm talking to you. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came upon all who what? Heard the message. And the circumcised believers, the Jews, the Jewish believers who come with Peter, were astonished, astounded that, here it is, the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles were, again, the generic name for people who were non-Jewish. People that were outside of the covenant of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they were astounded that the Holy Spirit came upon these Gentile believers. For they heard them speaking in tongues, praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? For they have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So Peter ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 11 is another account of this. Acts 11, verses 15 through 17 says this. As I began to speak, talk about the same experience, the Holy Spirit came upon them as He came upon us at the beginning, referring to the day of Pentecost, referring to, to the, the Acts chapter 2 experience. Then I remember what the Lord had said. John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift He gave us, if God gave the Gentiles the same gift as He gave the Jew, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? Isn't that great? Isn't that great? See, see they believed in Jesus, and, and they didn't even know the Holy Spirit. And Peter's preaching on the Holy Spirit, teaching them about the Holy Spirit, maybe even preaching this very same message. And just like you're sitting there and you're hearing this today, you know what happened? The Holy Spirit, this is something. He went to heaven. The Holy Spirit interrupted Peter's message. Broke him. And, and started touching people. Coming upon people. And they it, it would be it'd be like 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 Emily just get up to just praise God. And say, what happened? Well, I don't know. There's something's all over me. Joy and peace and, 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 and over here. Hallelujah. They, that's what it says. It says the Holy Spirit came upon people and they praised God. They, it, Peter's message got interrupted. The Holy Spirit was coming upon people, touching them, filling them. And, and, and they, they just, oh my God. And Peter said, wow. Well, this is, this, is, this is amazing. And you 
And you know what happens? And, I, and this has happened many times in, in this church already. Uh, I'm up here preaching, or other pastors are up here, teachers are preaching, and the Holy Spirit come, will come upon you and has come upon me. And you just sense it. There's something, something just developing. There's a peace, there's a warmth, there's a presence, there's a joy, there's hope. There's just, there's something. I mean, you'd just be sitting there listening, not doing anything but listening. And the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You might have come in here today sick, and, and there might be pain in your back. And just as you're listening to me, the Holy Spirit come upon you and heal that, that, that pain. You might have a sciatic nerve problem. There's pain going down your leg right now. And the Holy Spirit, just as I'm sitting, he, he comes up. He's the healer. He's the, the Holy Spirit is the power of God, by the way. Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive what? Power. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's the power of God. And, and you might get... You, you might have been weighed down. You know, you might have had something going on at, at work, and you're just you're just tormented in your mind. You don't know what. And you come in, and you, you're in, you're listening to the praise of worship. You're listening to the message. You're listening just to, to testimonies of the goodness of God and the Holy Spirit come upon you, and just give you peace of mind. And here's the thing. Here's what Holy Spirit do. He'll give you answers. He'll say, do this, 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 this on Monday when you get to work. Oh yes, he will. He'll get your parents. You don't know what to do with your children. Let the Holy Spirit come on and give you wisdom. He's the, the Holy Spirit is the wisdom of God. He is the wisdom of God. He'll tell you exactly what to do with those kids. He'll give you the wisdom. Because none of us are smart enough to raise them. <laughs> I mean, all by ourselves. Amen. And he'll give, he'll, he'll give it to you. He'll give you the plan. He'll give you the plan. This, this, this building, this church, was birthed out of an experience with the Holy Spirit I had many years ago. The plans of this, the layout, the format. Uh, we just, I just said, Lord, how do you want this church to be laid out? We had a blank palette. Some of you remember, it's pretty blank. <laughs> there was one light bulb in this building. That was it. There wasn't the wall. A bunch of spiders. Okay. And I, said, I just asked the Lord. I just tell him. I said, God, how do you want us to, where do you want the platform? Where do you want the connection center? Where do you want the children's mission? Where do you want the restroom? And I mean, I, he gave me a snapshot. And I drew it down. Some of you remember that. It was pretty rough. And I'm not an artist. Took it over to the Holiday Inn. Put it on a big poster board. Remember that? Raise your hand if you remember that little boy. I mean, it was rough. It was crude. Right? That was birthed out of, out of hours of prayer. Asking God, how do you, this is your church. This is your church. How do you want to do The Holy Spirit. I heard, I saw, I experienced the Holy Spirit coming upon, coming upon. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you as you hear. Be sensitive to that. And, and, and when He does, you say, welcome, just welcome Him. Holy Spirit, so glad you're here. Touch me, change me, transform me, heal me, deliver me, set whatever you need. It's, it's God's will to meet you at the point of that name. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is ask. And receive. Many years ago, uh, I had heard about the Holy Spirit and teachings like this for the first time. You know, the first time, and maybe you're here today and maybe you're watching this on, on your, uh, your, your, your television at home. And this might be the first time you've ever heard a message like this. And I reckon, that's why we do this red conference, by the way. The Holy Spirit told me in a time of prayer, I want you to host a conference on the Holy Spirit. Teach people about the Holy Spirit. Give people an opportunity to receive and experience the Holy Spirit. That's why we do what we do. Because this is a, a, uh, a forgotten message within many churches today. Most churches today, I would dare say 90 to 95% of the churches don't preach one message throughout the year. Maybe this Sunday, maybe this would be the only Sunday on the day of Pentecost that you might hear about the Holy Spirit. you got 51 other weeks, you know, you never hear about the Holy Spirit. And if you're gone on that Sunday, you never, you didn't hear about it. <laughs> if you went out on the boat today, you didn't get to hear about it. And uh, we certainly don't want that to be the case again. We want people to know about Jesus, and we want people to know about the Holy Spirit, that they can receive both of the gifts of God. And, uh, and, and 
And I heard, I heard this message for the first time. I believed in God. I believed in the Trinity. All right. But, but I didn't, I, I wasn't taught of the Holy Spirit. All right. And I remember hearing messages like this for the first time. I mean, it was like a, it was a new revelation. It was a new revelation. And, uh, uh, and I heard about it. You know, if you're, if you're desiring more, if you're hungry for more of God, if you want the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is re repent of your sins. Right? Go back to that. To this, uh, uh, repent of your sins. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I've already done both of those things. I was saved. But I had not asked the Father for the Holy Spirit. Didn't know to ask. Didn't know to ask. This person, ask the Father. Ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. We'll lay hands upon you. We'll pray for you, Tim. Uh, and, and I heard about the Holy Spirit. I said, I want it. I said, when can we do it? And, and here's the thing. Joe, I, I don't know a whole lot of dates. I, I write dates down a whole lot on, on certain spiritual experiences. But I wrote the date down on this. July 4th, 1992. I don't know where you were at July 4th, 1992, but I can take you to the place in my bedroom where my youth pastor laid hands upon me and I said, I want it. I said, I want everything God's got for me. I have no idea what that means. But if God wants me to have it, the Holy Spirit, I want the Holy Spirit. And I want you to lay hands. They have the Holy Spirit. I said, I want you to lay hands on me and we're going to ask God to come upon a young, young man at the age of 21, July 4th, the day of fireworks. And they prayed for me. And for two hours, for two hours, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Immersed and filled with the Holy Spirit. Above, but I, I can't explain it. It was just like someone threw me in a pool of water. And, and, and I was in my bedroom and I, I just felt, and again, I hate to, and you know I don't share a whole lot of my personal experiences because part of the problem with sharing that personal experiences is that you think if God doesn't do it like that, that he didn't do it. See, that's the problem. But let me tell you how it happened with me. It doesn't mean God's going to do it this way with you. He can, but it doesn't mean he's going to. It felt like someone had threw me in the pool. But it wasn't a pool of water. It was like a pool of electricity. Like someone had like a heating blanket. You know when you got a heating blanket around you in the cold winter, you know, you just feel warm all over. Just, it just, you don't want to leave. That's what it felt like. It felt like from the hip. I was inside. July 4th, the air conditioning was on. But I was sweating. And it wasn't because I was hot. It was just because the Holy Spirit, I mean, it was just, I was it was like someone plugged me into a, an electric blanket from the crown of my head to the tips of my head. And here's what it felt like. It was going zoom, 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 zoom. Waves, like tidal waves, like an ocean. In and out and in and out. And for two hours, zoom, 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 zoom. And I, there was no doubt. I mean, no doubt what was going on. It wasn't the pepperoni pizza from the night before. It was God. Amen. And here's the thing. When the Holy Spirit, you'll know it's God. You'll know it's God. Jesus said, listen, this is no human experience I'm having. And it was just like God had plugged me in to His mighty presence. He said He'd do it. He said, if I asked, I'd receive. Amen. He said, if we had lay hands on people, we, that they would experience the presence of God. And, and I tell you what. I, from that moment forward, July 4th, 1992, became addicted to the presence of the Holy Spirit. I said, oh, I want that again. I want, and the next morning, I, I, I asked, I said, Holy Spirit, come. And He came. And the next morning, I said, come. And He came. And the next morning, I said, come. And He came. See, that's it. He's with you. The Bible says, Jesus said, He'll be with you forever. All you have to do is just welcome Him into your day. He's there. He's there. Now, not every day do I feel the... I'm not talking about that because you wouldn't get anything done. I mean, I was... Here's the thing. I was, I was frozen. Uh, I was... I, I couldn't move. The glory of God... I, there's no other way to say this. Is heavy. 
it's it, when they're, I mean, when I'm talking about, not a touching about, I'm talking about when, the, when you get engulfed in this thing. You know, people fall out under the, under the power of the Holy Spirit and you're, you're just pinned. And it's, and it's not because of, it's precious. It's precious. It's a precious Holy Spirit. It's not something to be feared or, or it's just, you'll feel like liquid love. It just felt like God filled me with liquid love. That's what it is. It just, I, I mean, I just cried tears of joy. It was so precious. I wouldn't give a trillion dollars for that experience. Right. Trillion. I wouldn't take it. Man, I've got that down July 4th, 1992. And I, I did. And I've had other experiences like that. Many times. A year ago, to, uh, uh, this weekend, I was on the floor for two, another two hours. And, and had a one. I mean, the Holy Spirit just, just blowing all over me. And God, the point is this. God wants to touch you. Amen. God, that isn't just for Pastor Tim. See, I wasn't pastor back in July 4th, 1992. I was a little snot-nosed college brat. <laughs> that, that's, I was ignorant. I didn't know really what I was asking for. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew if God wanted me to have it, I would. I would. And you know what? You could be here today. And you could be saved like I was. I was saved. Man, I love Jesus. I did. I love God. But I did not know anything about the Holy Spirit. And I, I certainly did not ever experience it other than a, a, a touch here or a touch there. And you could say, wow, I'm saved. And there's a second gift I can receive. Yes, there is. He's called the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is repent of your sins, ask Jesus Christ to become your Lord and Savior. Just ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. If you want us to, you want me to lay hands on you today, we'll certainly do that. And you know what? Some of you, the Holy Spirit, I can tell you right now, is touching you. There's, there's, there's. I know I can see. I can see the Holy Spirit touching you. Sometimes in my, in my, in my, in my services. You can just, I, 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 let me show you this one testimony. Years ago, when I started in ministry full time, about 20 years ago, actually, was preaching a message. And uh, I was in a, in a church, there was about 500 people there preaching. And uh, I was preaching on the teaching on the Holy Spirit. And there was a young lady up in the back. Uh, I can't remember her name, I can see her face. But uh, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon her in the middle of my message. And she just started to cry. And it wasn't a loud cry, like, you know, wailing or anything. But you could just tell the Holy Spirit was, was genuinely touching this young lady. And I just go on preaching and everything like that. And, and some people nod, you know, just you know, everything like that, all good things. But the service ends. Her husband is sitting next to her. Her kids are in the children's ministry. She can't move. She's just there. And the Holy Spirit was just all over her. And to make a long story short, you know, I, you know they called me up to, 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 to see what was wrong with her. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and, and I said, it's this stuff that she did. And she could talk, you know, and, and, but she just was captured. And she, you know, when God comes home, you don't want to leave. You don't want to. It's like you going to Dairy Queen. You don't want to leave. Right? <laughs> I mean, you know, when you find something good, you, you want to stay. And she just was stayed at the end. To make a long story short, something very traumatic in her life happened as a young girl. And God was touching her and healing her. And, and she had so, such anger for a person that violated her. And God touched that and healed her from the inside out, made her whole, washed her, and, and just came up, and she just was, just, 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 you just wanted to hug her. It was so precious, so precious. And, 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 we, and we just said, you know what? There's no rush. Don't leave. Don't leave until the Holy Spirit, and that's the thing. When God touches you, don't, don't move until he, he, He'll lift. His presence will lift, and then you move. That's when you move. I didn't move two, you know, a year ago, two hours ago, until the Holy Spirit came off me. You know, because you got to, don't short circuit what God's wanting to do in your life. Don't short circuit. And I said, listen, there's no rush. You just stay here. If you have to stay here all afternoon, that's fine. You just, you just call us when you're done and we'll come lock up the church. Don't you move. Because the Holy Spirit came upon She was hearing. And God did that. So, so just welcome the Holy Spirit. 
I've had other, other people say, you know, during my prayer time, I just walked in the Holy Spirit and I was just there. Mm -hmm. Just there. And, and four hours went by like that. Four hours. Just a snap. They look at me. Wow. They spent four hours in the presence of the Holy Spirit. 2,000 years ago, here's the point I close with this. 2,000 years ago on this very day, God the Father gave the church the gift, the treasure of heaven, the Holy Spirit, to be received and welcomed. Not just for a day, not just for an experience, but for the rest of your life, forever. Matter of fact, do you know what the word forever means? Forever. <laughs> Here's the point. The Holy Spirit is going to be with us, not just for our time on earth, but forever, for all eternity. Isn't that great? Matter of fact, the first thing we're going to realize when we get to heaven is this. The presence of God is everywhere. Yeah. We'll never be without the presence of God. And the presence of God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven. We can have the presence of the Holy Spirit with us right here, right now. Isn't that great? And we can take them with us home. We can take them with us to work, wherever we go. To the mall. Right? On our walk. The Holy Spirit would be with there. He's an abiding spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. So today, all you need to do is just open your heart to Him. He's, he's so precious. He's so tender. He will come upon you. He'll make Himself real to you. He'll give you exactly what you need from Him. And He'll bless your life. He'll change your life like He did mine. And, uh, and here's what He did. He ruined me for religion. Messed me up. <laughs> I could never go back to, to Christianity as usual. Once you experience the touch of God, you can't go back to dead, dull, dry religion. You just can't do it. You want that living water. Yeah. You want that living water. And we're here. Aren't we, Tabernacle? We're here because we love the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is so precious. So let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let me pray for you and ask the Father for the Holy Spirit today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that 2,000 years ago on this very day, you gave the gift of your Holy Spirit to your church, to those who believe and receive Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for every person here at the time this morning to receive, to open up their hearts and their lives, their minds and their spirits to the gift of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come now. Come upon each and every one of us. Fill us with your presence, your peace, and your power. I pray for every person that's watching uh, this message, Lord Jesus, that you would touch them, that you would minister your grace, that you would give them your gift, the gift of your Holy Spirit as you're giving it to us now. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.